How many times can a man rise, fall, and recreate himself? Steve Jobs, a humble genius with a simple vision, affordable personal computers. In his quest to realize his dream, he was even fired from the very company he helped start. For most, that would be rock bottom. He reinvented himself, pursued new ambitions, and discovered success in an entirely different field. His swan song and crowning achievement? To return back to Apple, the prodigal son who forged that company into the record-breaking, innovative, trend-setting juggernaut that it is today. Steve Jobs is actually adopted. His biological parents, Abdul Fattah al-Jandali and Joanne Schlieb, were both college students in the USA, studying in Syria at the time they got pregnant. Joanne's conservative family did not approve of the pregnancy, and he was given up for adoption when he was born on one condition that his adoptive parents pay for his college education. Jobs always appeared bored at school as a child, getting into plenty of trouble. He would resist teachers, play pranks, and cause general chaos, causing him to be suspended a handful of times. It wasn't until the fourth grade that a teacher saw through his disruptive behavior and glimpsed a brilliant mind. She would bribe him with small amounts of cash for getting through additional workbooks, and really challenged Jobs to excel and learn at the fast pace he was clearly capable of. This accelerated learning culminated in the school considering allowing him to jump several grades into junior high, though his parents wisely would not allow it. He went straight into the sixth grade. He was frequently bullied and was described as a socially awkward loner. His parents, distraught at seeing their son's failure to thrive and concerned he would drop out of school, decided to move to a better neighborhood, renowned for its high density of engineering families. Homestead High would be where Jobs meets Bill Fernandez, who would eventually become Apple's first employee, and who would introduce him to co-founder Steve Wozniak. Jobs was described as kind of a brain and kind of a hippie, but not really fitting into either group. He was smart enough to be a nerd, but wasn't nerdy, but he definitely was too intellectual for the hippies. It was in high school that Wozniak designed a digital device able to produce tones in a specific sequence, allowing free long-distance phone calls, dubbed the Blue Box. Jobs began selling these and splitting the profits with Wozniak. This is a significant contributor to the birth of Apple, as these Blue Boxes showed the dynamic duo could take on big business. Jobs applied to and enrolled in Reed College. This was the only one he applied to and one his parents could barely afford. This would be one contributing factor to him dropping out after just one semester, not wanting to waste his parents' hard-earned money on what was, in his opinion, a meaningless education. He did still attend some classes, although purely for his own interests as they weren't graded. During this time, he would sleep on the floor of a friend's dorm room, collect Coke bottles to trade in for cash, and eat any freely offered meal in order just to get by. Jobs moved back in with his parents after his failed attempt at college. He was hired by gaming company Atari as a technician, after Wozniak gave him a self-designed circuit board for a Pong knockoff for him to take to the interview. He spent almost a year in India searching for spiritual enlightenment and experimenting with other psychedelics, culminating with Jobs becoming a Zen Buddhist. The first Apple II logic board was built in Jobs' garage by he and Wozniak with the proceeds from selling their VW minibus and programmable calculator. The now-famous company would be founded later that same year. They would continue to make and sell home computers to hobbyists, culminating in the development of the Apple Lisa, first computer to use a mouse interface. Despite being the visionary of the Apple Macintosh home computer, slow sales and the inability to compete with IBM led to a company restructure, one without Steve Jobs. He was eventually pushed out of the company he had helped create. Jobs then started Next, a company designing powerful workstation computers for the education market. He also acquired the controlling share in a small division of Lucasfilm called Pixar, which would go on to become the pioneer in animated films. Partnering with Disney, Pixar was responsible for multiple critically acclaimed box office hits including Toy Story, Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, and Cars. There wouldn't be a child alive today who hasn't seen at least one Disney Pixar movie. Failing to develop a replacement for the Macintosh operating system, Apple decided to buy Jobs' company Next Step for over $400 million, bringing him back into the team as a consultant. He went on to perform brilliantly, forging a working alliance with Microsoft, without caving into using Windows to run Apple computers. Apple would still make its own hardware and software, 
He began molding Apple into what it is today with the introduction of iTunes, creation of the iPod, and revolutionizing how we listen to music. Apple went on to change the tech industry forever with the release of the iPhone. A cell phone wasn't just for phone calls anymore. Emails, internet browsing, games, and many more functions were added with subsequent generations and iOS updates. Jobs was the visionary behind these never before thought of concepts, setting trends and precedents mimicked by many of his rivals in the following years. In 2003, Jobs was diagnosed with a rare form of pancreatic cancer that is almost always fatal. Initially, Jobs pursued alternative treatments, but when that didn't work, he relented and underwent a liver transplant, returning to spearhead the company once he was healthy again. In 2011, however, he took a leave of absence due to failing health, sadly passing away a few months later. The death of a man who literally changed the way we live our lives every day. Steve Jobs, the visionary founder and leader of Apple Computer, has died at the age of 56. After tasting financial and existential defeat in his life multiple times, and despite failing health, Steve Jobs never gave up, consistently rising again from the ashes like a phoenix. Even after his death, his company spirit lives on. Apple was worth $200 billion in 2015, fast forward to now, and has exponentially grown to $1.4 trillion in 2020. That's a 700% growth in just five short years. It was also the first publicly owned company to exceed a value of a trillion dollars. Since that record, only three other companies, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, have also reached this milestone. He shaped how the world uses technology and media, developing products adored by millions. His work in computer technology, music, film, cell phones, and innovative thinking for over 30 years is what he will be remembered for.